You know, when Desna and Yog sothoth show up to the same party, you know you're in for an interesting ride. Today, I want to talk about ways that you can add some star power to your characters in Pathfinder 2e on this episode of The Local Disaster Tour Guide. Travelers and tourists, my name is Mark and I am the local disaster tour guide. That's right, I am a storyteller who is seeing stars. And clearly that is a reference to all of the fantastic people who support this channel and are part of the conversations around here. I absolutely love getting to talk to you all. Welcome to a journey through the fantastic world of TTRPGs like Pathfinder and Starfinder. And welcome to a conversation about ways that you can theme or build your characters around the concept of the night sky in Pathfinder 2e. Clearly this video is filler content. Wait, what? Okay, so let me come clean real quick before we go any farther in this video. I have been trying to work on Classic Introduction Summoner for a while now, and to be honest, that video is just kicking my butt. <laughs> I am on the third revision of the video, and hopefully this time I can get it right, but I promise you that video is coming. Still, I needed something to fill the slot this week, so I decided to do a little bit of a thematic episode and talk about a narrative concept that you see in a lot of different stories, which is characters that are tied to the stars, to the night sky, or just to all of the wonderful mysteries above. Now, I will say, as someone who has had the pleasure of living in rural Kentucky for large chunks of my life, I have, on many occasions, had the opportunity just to throw out a blanket and stare up at the sky and gaze at the beautiful and wonderful and, admittedly, sometimes terrifying expanse that is the stars above. Stories have, for generations, featured references to or links to the night sky and the stars, you can look back to the star-crossed lovers of Shakespeare, up to one of my favorite heroes in a video game, Cecil from Final Fantasy IV, who is literally not of this world, and you can see how themes of stars and celestial bodies and the mysteries of the night sky can make for very interesting characters. So today, what I thought I would do in this video is talk about the ABCs of character creation in Pathfinder 2e and highlight some of the options that you can use if you want to add the narrative element of stars or celestial magic in one fashion or another to your character. I'm going to highlight some of my favorite picks, and I'll go ahead and tell you I'm pulling from a lot of different books. I will do my best to make sure that I have all of the necessary references and page links, but I'm also probably going to have a lot of links to Archives of Nethys as well, just because I'm pulling from a lot of sources here. Still, if you're interested in creating a character who has a tie to the night sky, I hope that this video will give you some good options for how to do that. Now, even though this is admittedly filler content for my channel, if you enjoy this video, I would still love your support, and there are plenty of ways you can do that. All of the YouTube stuff applies here. Like, share, subscribe. Of course, you can check out my free Discord and my Patreon. Those will be linked in the video description. But the biggest thing you can do, and the thing that means the most to me, is to join in the conversation. So I encourage you to jump down to the comment section and let me know what some of your favorite options for tying your character to the mysteries of the sky above happen to be. And if I missed a good option, be sure to leave that in the comments so other people can find it as well. But with all that out of the way, let's get started. Now, the first step in character creation in Pathfinder 2e is A, Ancestry, and this is going to be the first opportunity that you have to try to tie your character to the mystery of the stars or the sky above. So, what are some ways that you can do that during the Ancestry portion of character creation? Well, if you're looking at the core rulebook, 
there are two ancestries that jump out as very obvious options that you could use for a star-themed character. The first one is the dwarves. Now, in Galarian lore, one of the major events that drove the dwarves is an event called the Quest for the Sky. Essentially, they were told by their deity that at a certain sign or a certain moment that they should begin to quest upward until they, well, could see the sky. And they ultimately did so, making their way to Galarian surface and even building massive sky citadels as locations for dwarves to live and work and interact with this new world that they had found. Even though the quest for the sky has been completed for the dwarves, it's still a major part of their cultural heritage, and if you were to look at the other game Paizo produces, Starfinder, the dwarves in Starfinder have in many ways continued the quest for the sky by, well, going out among the stars themselves. And that right there can give you a good picture of why dwarves could make for a good star-themed ancestry in Pathfinder 2e. That narrative touchstone of the quest for the sky, maybe your dwarf has some connection to that quest or that part of the dwarven culture and draws power or inspiration from that part of their history. Now the cool thing here is the quest for the sky is entirely a narrative hook and I think this is one of the important things to remember about character creation. A lot of Dwarven abilities center around things like stone and earth and crafting, which at first glance probably don't seem like a strong star-themed character, but because of the lore of the Dwarves in Galarian, they can actually work really, really well, which highlights the fact that a narrative tie can be just as strong as a mechanical tie. Still, if you're looking for actual mechanical ties, there is another ancestry in the core rulebook that has some pretty strong narrative and mechanical ties to the stars above, and that's the elves. Why? Literally, aliens. <laughs> that's right, elves in the Galarian setting are aliens. They have a different homeworld, and they traveled to Galarian through the use of portals and magic, and because the elves are not from Galarian, they have that alien quality to them all of the time. In fact, one of the elven ancestry feats is literally called Otherworldly Magic, referencing the fact that many of their abilities are drawn from the fact that they are not originally from this world. So elves quite naturally tie themselves to celestial themes or stars or the night sky, and could fit very easily for that kind of character. Now, if you want to step outside of the core rulebook, there are some other ancestries that are worth considering. First up is the Kitsune. Now, the fox folk on the surface might not seem like they would have a lot to do with the stars or the night sky, but there are several Kitsune heritages, such as the Celestial Envoy heritage, that directly tie the Kitsune's magical powers to the stars or other celestial bodies above, so if you're looking for a character that fits those themes, a lot of Kitsune heritages can actually pull that off really well. In addition, much like the face of the moon is always changing, so too does the Kitsune's ability to change their form mirror a lot of the themes you would see in a star-powered style of character. After that, you have the Eruxi, or the Lizard Folk, which, by canon in Galarian, have a long-standing and well-established tradition of astrology. They spend a lot of time studying the stars, and there are several Eruxi ancestry feats that specifically reference astrology or magic that is tied to the stars. Of course, the ultimate ancestry you can use if you are interested in tying your character to the stars, at least in the Pathfinder setting, it is straight up the android. Literally robots from space, their starship crashed in Numeria, and now they're stuck on Galarian, you cannot be more connected to the stars than to literally fall from them. Androids do make for very interesting characters. The concept of a constructed creature that can house different souls over the life of the body, and some of the narrative implications of that are just really interesting. Paizo, when are we going to get the Numeria book? There are some serious threads here that I would like to unravel. But in a general sense, androids are the ancestry in Galarian that best fits the theme of the celestial or the stars above. 
Now, outside of the five ancestries I've mentioned here, there are a couple of other things you can do if you're interested in tying a different ancestry to astrological or star-themed powers. The first one is find a way to give your character low light vision or dark vision. If your character is going to operate under the night sky, the ability to work well at night is going to be useful. And this is where a lot of versatile heritages come in. Most versatile heritages don't necessarily tie to the stars, though the Azimar is going to fit in with a lot of the things we'll talk about on Cleric later in the class section. But a lot of versatile heritages will give you either low light vision or dark vision, and that at least makes your character more effective in that setting, and as a result will kind of tie you better to those ideas. The other option you can use is luck powers. A lot of stories that revolve around the stars have the stars as a sort of guide and often aid the character in subtle ways throughout the story, and luck, or fortune mechanics, are one of the easy ways that you can kind of get that feel in your story. So ancestries like the Amurin or Catfolk, or possibly Halflings, their ancestry feats can easily be flavored so that they fit in a celestial-themed game quite easily. Now, the next stage of character creation is background, and at first glance, background may seem like a portion of character creation where you're not going to be able to do much to give your character the theme of being tied to the stars. Most of the common backgrounds in the game just really don't have that feel to them. There are a few that I think could reasonably be tied to celestial themes. For example, Fortune Teller and Nightwatch, and the big one here would be the cultist background. That very easily could be tied to a star-centered story. But most of your common backgrounds really aren't going to have that narrative pull. There is one special note that I would like to make here, though, and that is the Raised by Faith background that can be found in Lost Omens, Gods, and Magic. That background can be used to tie you to a specific deity. And in the next section on class, we're going to talk about the champion and the cleric, and some of the deities that are tied to celestial themes. So if you were to use the Raised by Faith background and tie it to one of those deities, that could work pretty well here. However, there are a few options beyond just the common background options mentioned in Pathfinder 2e. So let's talk about rare backgrounds, because when you get into rare backgrounds, there is suddenly a wealth of opportunity and this can actually be one of the easiest ways to give your character a celestial theme. Now, obviously, when it comes to rare backgrounds, you will need your Game Master's permission to use one of these backgrounds, but if your Game Master is open to the idea, there are a number of rare backgrounds that very easily can tie your character to the stars or the dark spaces in between. Really quick, I would like to note, several of these come from the Lost Omens Travel Guide that literally has an entire section on astrological backgrounds. So, obviously that is a major resource for this part of the video. However, there are some other rare backgrounds that I think could work as well. Really quick, here's a list of some of the rare backgrounds that I think work really well for characters who are tied to these sort of celestial storylines. Chosen One, Otherworldly Mission, Sun Dancer, Starless One, Nocturnal Navigator, Eclipseborn, Doomcaller, Astrological Augur, Tidewatcher, and Signbound. All of these are going to come with minor special abilities that I think could fit astrological themed games very easily. However, there is one background I think that is really worth calling out here, and that is the Signbound background from Lost Omens Travel Guide. The travel guide actually discusses some of the known constellations in Galarian's Night Sky. They give you 13 different constellations, and this background gives you 13 different minor magical powers that are associated with being born under one of those constellations. It's a very flexible background that is neatly tied to the Galarian setting and really fits the theme of star power just, just perfectly. So all of those rare backgrounds I think could be very good for this style of character, but Signbound especially is just a top-notch choice. Now before I leave background, one thing I'd like to say really quick is if you are a Game Master 
who wants to use the idea of stars or celestial influence in your campaigns, and you want to apply that to all of your characters, you could look at the signbound background and just take the magical powers portion and assign those to characters based on their constellation, and then let them choose backgrounds normally with all of the other normal benefits, it wouldn't really throw off the balance of the game, and it would easily allow you to kind of apply that theme across the whole board. So Game Masters, if you're interested in doing that kind of story, I suggest taking a look at the signbound background and kind of using that as a springboard for further ideas. Of course, the largest part of character creation and the point in the story where you can most deliberately add some of these themes in is definitely going to be class. Class is really an opportunity to give your character a lot of powers and abilities that are expressly linked to the idea of stars, celestial bodies, or the dark spaces in between. Now, if you really, really want to lean in to a star-themed character, there are three classes in particular that I just think really are going to fit the bill for you, and that is the Champion, the Cleric, or the Oracle. All three of these classes have a very strong divine flavor, and in the Galarian setting in Pathfinder, there is a strong link between divinity and star power, if you will. Serenre is the goddess of the sun, Desna is a goddess who flies among the stars, and over in Tian Shao you have deities like Sukio, who are represented by the moon. It's just very common in Paizo's world building to associate deities with celestial bodies in one way or another. And this actually extends beyond deities. You'll get a lot of creatures like angels or imperial lords that are also associated with the stars as well. So any class that deals with the divine, divine magic, divine creatures is a class that is naturally going to have a lot of ties to these kinds of powers or abilities. Now, in specific, there's actually a pantheon in the Galarian setting called the Cosmic Caravan. This pantheon includes Ashava, the Black Butterfly, Desna, Ketaphis, Pallura, Serenre, Sukio, and Yogg-Sothoth. So, if you're looking for a character with some star powers, starting out as a follower of one of those deities or, or as a worshiper of that pantheon as a whole is a very natural place to start. It is interesting to note an important divide in Paizo's general world building that a lot of star-themed deities tend to be more towards good alignments where most of the evil deities tend to be associated with the underground such as Rovagug. In other words, a lot of your good deities are associated with those bright lights in the sky above. That being said, there are still plenty of dark places between the stars so if you're interested on a creepier take on a night sky themed character, you might want to look into Galarian's references to the dark tapestry, the void between the stars. And this is a place that's going to be inhabited by outer gods and great old ones, such as Cthulhu or Nyarlathotep. Whether you're looking at the cosmic caravan or the dark tapestry, you have a lot of good options for champions, clerics, and oracles who really want to lean into this kind of character. Now, as for some specific mechanics, there are two that really jump out here. One is the Cosmos Mystery for Oracles, which is about as star-themed a set of powers as you can get. So if you're playing an Oracle, I definitely recommend checking that one out. And actually, at a lot of the tables I've played at, the Cosmos Oracle has proven to be one of the more popular versions of the Oracle. So it's a pretty common choice. And then the other option that really stands out is the Star Domain, which can be found in Lost Omens Gods and Magic, allowing clerics and champions and certain oracles to access literal star-themed powers. Now, moving past champions, clerics, and oracles, you can kind of divide the other classes in the game into two groups, which are spellcasters and non-spellcasters. When we talk about spellcasters, I think there is a general rule that's worth observing here. In terms of Galarian's lore and Paizo's writing, divine spellcasters and occult spellcasters tend to lean pretty easily into celestial or star-themed concepts. After that, arcane characters can reasonably lean into the idea, but they don't have as many upfront connections, 
and then most of your primal or elemental style casters are going to be too tied to the world around them to really look to the stars above for power. It's not impossible to make a primal or elemental spellcaster work as a star-themed character, but it's going to be a little bit harder to do. When it comes to the actual spellcasting classes, there's only one class that I think doesn't have any real celestial narrative hooks to it, which is strange because the class does actually use the word star for one of its subclasses, but the Magus for me feels just a little too generic when it comes to star-themed powers. You could certainly make a Magus that has some ties to celestial bodies, but you're probably going to get those narrative hooks from other places like Ancestry or Background. I don't feel like the class really delivers. The Summoner is another option that can be a little weak here. An Angel Eidolon Summoner, which uses Divine Magic, can have some of the same ties that a Cleric or Oracle might have, but they're going to lose out on the domains and mysteries that I've mentioned before, so they don't have a lot of direct ties, and the current occult variations of the Summoner revolve around phantoms, which really don't scream star power to me. Now, if they ever release an aberration-themed Eidolon for the Summoner, I think that could tie very easily to star power, so, so Paizo, please get working on that. But the Summoner overall feels a little weak when it comes to these themes. However, most of your spellcasting classes are going to have at least some options. First up, let's talk about the Witch. When it comes to Witch Patrons, I think there are two Patrons that really stand out here. One is the Fate Patron, which feels almost narratively perfect for a lot of how stars tend to be used in classical mythology. And then the other one that is also a no-brainer here is the Night Patron. Either of these two options can tie your Witch to benevolent or much more questionable powers in the skies above. Next up is the Bard, and it's easy to find ways for a Bard to be inspired by the stars. However, I think there are two particular muses that strike me as just really well adapted to this style of character, and that's the Enigma and Maestro muse. Maestro works just because of inspiration. If you think of all of the angels that Paizo associates with the stars, or just the beauty of the night sky itself, it's easy to see how a Maestro muse bard could kind of fit these narrative themes well. And then Enigma bards are all about mysteries, and mysteries are a natural narrative tether as well. Looking at the Sorcerer, there are a couple of bloodlines I also think could work pretty well for this style of character. First up is the Angelic Bloodline Sorcerer, and this just kind of follows what I mentioned earlier for the Champion, Cleric, and Oracle, Divine Power, and, and ties to some of the Celestial Creatures in the Galarian setting. Angelic Bloodline is pretty easy to use here. And then the other option that exists entirely to make the Summoner jealous is the Aberrant Bloodline, which can be used to tie your sorcerer to the alien creatures that hide between the stars. Dark Tapestry for the win. Another class worth discussing is the Wizard, and Wizard is one of those classes that doesn't have any hooks that just jump out and scream, this is going to be a star-themed character, but as a research-focused class, you can pretty easily push a Wizard in the direction of studying the sky, studying the stars, or studying the magic that comes from the stars, so Wizard can still be done pretty well. This video is being recorded before the Pathfinder remaster, so right now, using the existing Schools of Magic, I think Divination Wizards are the easiest way to do this, followed by Conjuration Abjuration, with Enchantment and Illusion being in a distant 4th and 5th place. We haven't had a chance to see exactly what Paizo is going to do with the new Arcane Schools after the remaster comes out, so I imagine there will probably be some options when that is released that could fit these concepts as well. I just don't know what those are at the moment, so that's what we've got to go on so far. Now let's talk about non-casters. For the most part, non-casting classes aren't going to have a lot of direct mechanical hooks to the night sky, to the stars, that kind of thing. You can pull in ideas from ancestry and background, but most of your non-caster classes just aren't going to have those mechanical hooks you might be looking for, but there are a few non-caster classes that I think are worth discussing. 
First up is the Rogue, because of the Eldritch Trickster Racket, which literally allows you to multi-class into any of the spellcasting options we've already discussed. So, maybe just have your Rogue abscond with that meteorite that crashed outside of their village not too long ago, and then maybe discover some powers they never knew they had. The Eldritch Trickster Rogue can easily kind of loop into any of the earlier conversations we've talked about before. The next class worth discussing is the Barbarian, where I want to talk about the Spirit Instinct. Now, the Spirit Instinct, as it currently exists, is mostly used to tie a Barbarian to their ancestors or the spirits that have gone before. However, I don't think it would be too much of a stretch to talk to your Game Master and reflavor the Spirit Instinct just a bit where your Barbarian has connections to strange entities from beyond this world, I think those powers could still work very easily and very well and represent that kind of character who is maybe being driven mad by voices from the Dark Tapestry or some other concept like that. However, if there's one non-caster class that very easily can lean into star power, it has to be the Thaumaturge. It is the martial class that is all about collecting weird stuff and using that weird stuff in creative ways to overcome their foes. The Thaumaturge is a natural pick, and the investigative style of the class could go very well with a lot of the mystery style stories that tend to be associated with the stars. If you're looking at a Thaumaturge, I think three implements in particular are worth considering. The first and most obvious implement is the Lantern Implement. Stars, light, lantern, it's an easy fit, and the stories there just write themselves. The second one worth considering would be the Amulet Implement, and this kind of goes back to my discussion of fortune and luck earlier, where the stars can be seen as a protective force. I think the Amulet Implement and its protective abilities would be a natural fit to a star-themed character. The final one, and this is a little bit more of a stretch, would be the Wand Implement, but when you picture things like comets and meteors and some of the other destructive forces found in the skies above, the Wand Implement could also work pretty well. Still, in general, the Thaumaturge as a whole is probably the best non-caster class when it comes to taking celestial themes and just really running with them. Of course, as we leave the ABCs of character creation, that last class that we talked about, the Thaumaturge, does highlight another way that you can tie your character to the stars above, and that is through the use of equipment. Rare, unusual, or strange items acquired from, well, beyond Galarian, are a very easy way to give your character that feel of being tied to the stars, and one example that I'm not going to chase because it would take way too long is the idea of the star medals. A lot of these special medals in Galarian, such as Adamantine, are pictured as star medals. They come from beyond the world of Galarian, and that's part of the reason they are so rare and so valuable. However, there are also a few other equipment options that I found that are a little bit cheaper and easier to get that are also worth considering. First up, if you're looking for a star-themed character, especially if you're playing a character who worships Desna. There's a weapon called the Star Knife. It's about as plain an option as you can get. Pick one up, congratulations, you've got a tie. Two other options worth considering here are the Flaming Star Spell Heart and some of the Star Tattoo options that you can find in Pathfinder. Spell Hearts are described in the book Secrets of Magic, and the Flaming Star Spell Heart is an item that can be attached to your weapon or your armor, that can be used to produce a special effect when you cast certain spells, and given the naming convention here, it should not surprise you, the spells in question are going to be fire-related. You can see the narrative angle they're going for there, but the other items I think are really fun are the Navigator's Star Tattoo, which is a first-level item, so it can be acquired very early in the game, and the 10th-level upgrade, the Star Chart Tattoo, which are special tattoos that get inscribed on the back of your character's hand that you can hold up to the stars and use to help navigate the world around you. It's thematic, artistic, very useful, and quite flavorful. It's a very easy way to give your character celestial feel 
with a relatively minor gold piece investment. But that brings me to the end of today's video. Those are just some of my suggestions of things that you can check out if you're interested in playing a character who has narrative ties to the stars, to the sky above, to the night sky, or to the dark spaces between the stars. And all of those represent some different ways to add some fun narrative or mechanical flavor to your character. But the time has come for me to turn the conversation over to you. What are some of your favorite options for a star power themed character? And what would you recommend for someone who wants to use those themes inside their game? If you have a favorite from the options I've listed today, feel free to discuss those in the comments. And if there's an option I've overlooked that you think just really fits this concept, be sure to share that as well. Don't forget all the other YouTube stuff, like, share, and subscribe. Check out Discord, Patreon, links in the video description. But as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Have a wonderful day.